Today we're looking at the eBay user agreement and things in there that everybody should know. Hey, Don here. Today we're going to be looking at the eBay user agreement and what is in there and what you should know. Some of the most important takeaways from what is in there that you agree to when you accept eBay's user agreement. So an important line here is any guidance we provide as part of our service, such as pricing, shipping, listing, and sourcing is solely informational and you may decide to follow it or not. Also, while we may help facilitate the resolution of disputes through various programs, eBay has no control over and does not guarantee the existence, quality, safety, or legality of items advertised. The truth or accuracy of users' content or listings, the ability of sellers to sell items, the ability of buyers to pay for those items, or that a buyer or seller will actually complete a transaction or return an item so this is just basically saying that they have no actual contact it's not their responsibility to guarantee any of the options you see on here so there's no guarantee on quality legality of some of the items they sell so even if somebody knows they can't sell something they can still list it on eBay and in those cases they may be selling something illegal so you will have to pay attention to that aspect of it now, Section 3, using eBay of the user agreement, states, post, list, or upload content or items in inappropriate categories or areas on our site. So that's basically telling you you have to list your items in the correct category. So that's very important here. It also states you can't breach or circumvent any laws, regulations, third-party rights, or our system services policies or determinations of your account status. So this basically means you can't deceptively use the system to gain it for your own profits. It also means that you can't circumvent such as bidding on your own item from another account trying to inflate your numbers. So something you do need to be aware of. Now another key part here is use of our service if you are not able to form legally binding contracts. If you are under 18 in most states, you cannot form a legally binding contract, hence you can't be on the site unless you can form that contract. So it goes into some other standard aspects of it. Obviously fail to pay or fail to deliver an item once someone has paid would also be issues. Another key one in this section would be manipulating the price of an item or interfering with any other user's listings. Other key issues, post false, inaccurate, misleading, deceptive, defamatory, or libelous content. So that basically goes into what you can list in there. So you can't say, this seller is bad, you need to buy from me. You can't leave derogatory remarks and feedback either. So that covers pretty much anything you would post in there. Another key one here, which I know a lot of people do end up doing, is transferring your eBay account, including feedback and user ID, to another person without their consent. You have to okay anything like that through eBay. Now, I'm not saying eBay wouldn't allow it. It just it has to be okayed through them. They have to be fine and understand who's taking over the account. You can't just pretend to be somebody else is the key aspect of that. Now, they also address infringing copyright, trademark, patent, publicity, moral, database, and things along that line, and as well as intellectual property rights. Now, this aspect here only qualifies to be covered if you have legal documentation from a country, uh, such as a copyright certificate here in the U.S. If you do not have that, you have no legal rights to claim anything. And with the statement of intellectual property, in section 9, paragraphs 1 and 2 of the user agreement, it basically states when you provide content using our services directly or indirectly, you grant us a non-exclusive, world, perpetual, irrevocable, royalty-free, sub-licensable through multiple tiers rights to exercise any and all intellectual property rights you have in that content in connection with our provisions, expansions, and promotions of our service in any media known now or developed in the future. 
So this basically means that any image, any textual uh, things you post to eBay is owned by eBay. Unless you have a copyright, everything that you post up on eBay, literally every single piece of content is owned by eBay. And they can license that through a paid service to another company as they wish because again, you've just given up the right to own or do anything with that content once they have it. So for those of you who see eBay ended listings and things like that on sites such as WorthPoint, PopPsych, and there's many other ones, they are under Section 9 here, able to sell your content all they wish to these third-party sites to gain income from those images. So that is something you have to understand. If you don't want your images spread around, you don't want to post them up on eBay. That could be some major issues to some of those who own copyrights but don't have a physical copyright certificate from the U.S. government. And as well, you have to consider that just because you share it on eBay and think it's only going to stay on eBay, eBay does allow APIs, third-party apps, to access your listings if you want to list them on another site through applications, third-party applications such as Inkfrog, Shopify, and many other things that will pull out your items and they will be using those same initial photos that you uploaded. So once those photos are exported to another site, the other site's rules could be totally different and could allow further use of those photos. So you just have to be aware of that before you do anything with uploading your image to sell an item on eBay. Now eBay also has a minimum performance standards that you must meet, which is written into the user agreement as well. So if you fail to meet those standards, they can result in other things such as charging you additional fees and or limiting, restricting suspending or downgrading your seller account meaning you will be punished if you don't follow those rules which again is something that I would expect most companies to do if you don't follow the rules there should be some form of retribution at that point one more very important key aspect in this section is if we believe you are violating our policies prohibiting offers to buy or sell outside of eBay you may be subject to a range of actions including limits on your buying and selling privileges restrictions on listings and account features, suspensions of your account, application of fees, and recovery of expenses for policing, monitoring, and enforcement. So if they have to spend any time or effort into enforcing things that you may violate, you could also be forced to offer restitution for those fees that they incurred. So always take that in mind. If you violate the rules, eBay has to enforce those rules, whether in court of law or through arbitration, which is most of what you would have to do, you could be forced to reimburse eBay for any said fees. One last key aspect on this, if you are a seller and you offer or reference your contact information or ask a buyer for their contact information in the context of buying or selling outside of eBay, you may be liable to pay a final value fee applicable to that item, even if the item does not sell. So even if you're just talking about it and offering it to somebody in an email, you could be forced to pay the fees as if you did sell it, whether you did or not. Now, another key factor is how eBay enforces this. When a buyer or seller issue arises, we may consider the user's performance history and the specific circumstances in applying our policies. We may choose to be more lenient with policy enforcement in an effort to do the right thing for both buyers and sellers. So even if you do violate a specific policy, there may or may not be penalties depending on how eBay feels about the specific situation. So. Just because one person may not get in trouble for doing something doesn't mean that you won't be able to get in trouble for doing the same thing based on other factors such as your history with the company and how you handle certain situations in the past. Now, fees and taxes is very self-explanatory. I would hope you are required to pay your fees within a certain length of time. If they do change any form of fee on eBay, no matter what, they guarantee that they will give us at least a 14-day notice in advance posted on the site as well as notifying the sellers as well as buyers on the platform. So if you don't pay those fees, eBay has full rights to claim that and to seek restitution from you, a standard policy that almost every company company that I've ever seen will have on their agreement. You also have to pay the taxes on your items. So if there's state tax, federal tax, income tax, you are required to do it. It is not eBay's responsibility in any way, shape, or form to cover those. 
Now eBay does collect sales tax, state sales tax, and report it to the correct state that it goes to so you don't have to. That is a service that eBay does include. There is a processing fee on that for collecting the money, but other than that, they handle everything else. Now listing conditions is another aspect here. You assume full responsibility for the item offered and the accuracy and the content of the listing. You cannot blame eBay. This goes for the buyer or the seller. So it would not be eBay's fault if, let's say, you bought a fraudulent item on the site. It would be the seller's fault. It would be the seller you would have to seek restitution from, not necessarily eBay. Another thing that many people do seem to miss is your listings may not be immediately searchable by keyword or category for several hours or up to 24 hours in some circumstances. eBay can't guarantee exact listing duration. So all of the durations that are quoted on eBay are not guaranteed to be exact. That is stated here in there, and you cannot hold them liable if you're missing a few hours or something else does transpire. So if you're paying for, say, a week listing, it may only be showing up possibly for six days, and they are covered under that aspect here because eBay can't guarantee exact listing durations. One more aspect in this section, your fixed price listing may renew automatically every calendar month based on the listing terms at the time until all quantities sell or the listings ended by you or eBay in its sole discretion. Another key aspect, content that violates any of eBay's policies may be modified, obfuscated, or deleted at eBay's sole discretion. Meaning that if you post something up there that's not legit or there's some other issue or it violates eBay's user agreement, they can end that listing at their will at any given time. Now, some very important aspects here. eBay will strive to create a marketplace where buyers find what they are looking for. Therefore, the appearance or placement of listings in search and browse results will depend on a variety of factors, including but not limited to buyer's location, search query, browsing site and history, items location, listing format, price and shipping cost, terms of service, end time, history, and relevance to the user. Now here's a key one here for those of you who are sellers. Seller's history, including listing practices that, of course, they are determination of your listing practices, detailed seller ratings, eBay policy compliance. So if you violate the rules, your listings may not show up very often. Just keep that in mind. That is built into the user agreement. Your feedback can also be used as can your defect rate. One other aspect, number of listings matching the buyer's query. So if there's a ton of listings matching the buyer's query, they don't have to show everybody's listing in that result because they will limit it to help the buyer see fewer options so they won't have as much to look at. Now the most important one in this section in my mind is to, dr to drive a positive user experience. A listing may not appear in some search and browse results regardless of the sort order chosen by the buyer. Basically stating that your listing does not have to appear in a search result at all because of eBay's consideration that it may not be useful to the buyer. It is at eBay's sole discretion as to which listings would or would not be appropriate to any specific buyer. Basically meaning they do not have to show your listing if they deem it not necessary. Following along with this line, some advanced listing upgrades will only be visible on some of our services. So let's say someone's using a phone versus the actual site on a laptop. The phone service may not offer some of the same options that you would see or even could have paid for on the actual site itself. Now, section seven, purchasing conditions. You are responsible as the buyer for reading the full item listing before making a bid or committing to buy. So once you commit or put a bid in, there's not much legally wise that you can do. Now, eBay does allow you in certain circumstances, if you made an honest mistake, to withdraw or retract your bid or offer. Now under Section 8, International Buying and Selling Translation, they go over the rules and laws that they do have to report certain information to overseas shippers. And under this section, the user agreement allows eBay to share any personal information required to other countries to Pitney Bowes, as Pitney Bowes is the processor for your mail through eBay. They are the facilitator for the printing and pricing and such forth of those items overseas. So you allow them to do it. This section also covers other issues such as translation, which eBay will do to the best of their ability. Now back down to section nine and 
basically your rights to your own content. In Section 9, as I said, you basically give up any rights to anything that you upload to the platform, such as your photos, titles, descriptions, or anything else like that describing your item. You basically give eBay the permission to use those as they see fit. They will basically own the licensing for those items. You also represent and warrant that for all such content you provide, you own or otherwise control all necessary rights to do so and to meet your obligations under this user agreement. You represent and warrant that such content is accurate. You represent and warrant that use of any such content, including derivative work by us, our users, or others in contract with us, and in compliance with this user agreement, does not and will not infringe any intellectual property rights of any third party. Basically, if you go ahead and just use somebody else's copyrighted material without their permission, you are not following the user agreement and can be dinged. As I said earlier, there is a Vero program for those items that are copyrighted and you have copyrighted documentation to prove that. And Section 10 does explain the Vero program, which is Verified Rights Owners Program. It explains how it works, and there is a separate section on here on how to submit those documents. I have used this option before. You just have to make sure that you actually have a certificate of copyright notice from the U.S. Copyright Office if you are on the U.S. site. Other countries have other various reasons. eBay does accept other international copyrights in many cases, so those could also apply in here. Now, Section 11 talks about holds and restrictions. eBay can recommend restrictions on your PayPal account if they see certain actions through the history of your seller, your seller performance returns, or riskiness of the listing categories you are using. Sometimes they can request a hold on your account for the value of the transactions, say if you were selling an item for twenty or $30,000, or if you were selling massive amounts of merchandise all of a sudden for twenty or $30,000 as well, they could request a hold on it. You are agreeing to that option. So if you are still on PayPal and not in managed payments and wonder why sometimes your account could be hold, eBay reserves the right to request a hold on your account through them for PayPal to hold that money. Now, Section 12 is under authorization to contact you, recording calls, analyzing message content. So eBay does screen calls to see if certain things are mentioned. They also can screen calls or record them if you are calling for various and sundry reasons. Now, you are not allowed technically to do that unless you have eBay's permission. Both parties in the state of California have to have okayed you to record it for you to record. But eBay, through the user agreement, is already telling you ahead of time that they do that so you are aware of that issue by accepting the user agreement you are agreeing that they can record your messages it also says in here that they can send you advertisements through text to any number that you do provide to eBay. So if you don't want them calling on your private cell phone, don't give them your private cell phone number because you authorize them to do that anytime they seem fit to do that. Now in the returns and cancellation sections, there are some key things here. Now in the returns and cancellation sections, you are authorizing eBay to take the funds from PayPal and have PayPal hold anything and refund them to the person that actually purchased the item in these cases. Now under managed payments, it's basically the same thing, but you're authorizing eBay to do it for you eBay also states the cost of a return shipping for an item that is not as described as the seller's responsibility. So if somebody opens up a case not as described, no matter what, you are responsible to pay for the return shipping out of your own pocket. The next section, eBay Money Back Guarantee, basically says that you are authorizing them to actually take the money out of your funds to give somebody back their money, especially in those cases when the item was not as described. So you are covered during certain circumstances, such as if the item shows delivered through tracking or if it's an expensive item over $750 and you have signature confirmation to prove it, you will be covered under eBay's Money Back Guarantee. Now, for those under managed payments, it's basically the same thing you would have to do followed under PayPal as you would now under managed payments, which is through eBay. You basically have to meet all the rules for Aiden, which is the company that runs eBay's managed payments for them. So it's just basically following along with the rules, stating that you need a bank account, checking in the whole works to actually process your funds. So if you are under managed payments, you should at least read over this section as well so you understand how it all works. 
One more key factor, the payments entity may, in its sole discretion, manage payments on your behalf even if you haven't provided all requested information, and the payment entity may withhold payments pending receipt of such information. So basically, they may collect and process the funds, but they may not pay them out to you until you've supplied them with all legal documentation that's stated or required by that third party. Now, Section 15 of the User Agreement, Disclaimer of Warranties, Limitations of Liabilities. You agree that you are making use of our service at your own risk and that they are being provided to you on an as-is and as-available basis. Accordingly, to the extent permitted by applicable law, we will exclude all express or implied warranties, terms and conditions, but not limited to implied warranties of merchantability, fitness for a particular purpose, and non-infringement. So basically, you cannot hold eBay liable for any of the issues that arise from pretty much anything that you are selling or buying on the platform. All items are as is and as available. So if the item isn't available, that is not eBay's issue. That is actually between you and the buyer. So if something goes wrong on the site, the person that would be responsible would be the person you bought it from or selling it to, not eBay in any case whatsoever. Section 16 is a release. Basically, if there is a dispute between you and a buyer or a seller, you release eBay from any claims or actual issues or damages against them. It is between you and the actual buyer or seller. eBay is exempt and not liable for anything that happens on their own site. Indemnity is number 17, which means you won't hold eBay for any claims or damages against them whatsoever. Now, of course, there are some stipulations and there are some reasons why you could still hold eBay liable, such as laws that would be broken in specific states, such as laws in California. Section 18 goes into how legal disputes are handled. For the most part, it would be handled through arbitration, which you are agreeing to. Now, if there is some law, again, that may be violated by eBay's regulations or user agreement there would be some possibility for some things to go legally wise against eBay that wouldn't be handled through arbitration it would be handled in a court of law to some extent and the last section of the user agreement is just a general catch-all section which basically covers them and allows them to change the user agreement as long as they post a visible 30-day notice on the site and contact and notify those using the platform so they do have the right to change this user agreement every 30 days if that is what they wish to do just basically covers any other other aspect including if you are a business and you are using it as a business entity you still have to follow and oblige by all rules in the user agreement and the very final note the following sections survive any termination of this user agreements fees content disclaimer of warranties limitation of liability release indemnity legal disputes in general so basically if this user agreement is totally void the rest of these will be valid no matter what which again goes back in the fees contents and such forth well there you have it those are the most important parts that i see hopefully that gave you some ideas some thoughts if you enjoyed this video please hit that like button down below you can also hit the bell icon to be notified if i post new content or go live subscribe and tell all your friends It's you against the Cobra. The Hot Wheels Cobra stunt set. You put it in coils, slippery straights. You can take it on with your Hot Wheels Cobra race car. You want to go first? Sure. Okay. I'll show you how it's done, and I'll make it even tougher. Super. Hot Wheels Cobra stunt set comes with Cobra race car and eight feet of track. Some cars not for use with some sets. New from Hot Wheels by Mattel.